The world of open source AI is full of outliers and underdogs, and Mistral AI is one without exception. I think Mistral is interesting because they seemingly came out of nowhere, they came out of Europe, and their work is unanimously incredible, and equally French. This weekend marked a really important milestone. So at the annual Mistral AI hackathon hosted in SF, they announced a new version of Mistral 7b. They're calling it Mistral 7b version 0.2. And I think it's important to understand how far we've come, because the original the original version of Mistral 7b was released on September 27th, 2023 by the Mistral AI team. And at its time, this was a groundbreaking release. It was outperforming Llama 2 on all 13 billion parameter benchmarks. It was outperforming even Llama 134B on most benchmarks and was approaching code Llama 7B performance on code. So it did a lot of things really well. It was completely open source and you could deploy it anywhere right away. And the other funny thing was it was released as kind of a joke tweet as a torrent. So what's the purpose of Mistral 7B version 0.2? Is it really a game-changing model? Model? Is it just kind of an incremental upgrade? And how does it compare to the original Mistral 7B model that changed open source AI forever after it was released? Welcome to AI Flux, let's get into it. So this is what started everything. Obviously there's been a lot of noise on Twitter about this hackathon. Obviously Beth was there, a lot of other interesting people showed up. I'm not gonna share my thoughts on hackathons as a professional developer, but I think a lot of good stuff comes out of these events. So what differentiates Mistral 7b version 0.2 base from Mistral 7b and everything previously Mistral 7b? So basically the big thing here is there is a 32,000 token context window. It has a one e to the six rope theta and there's no sliding window. And we're gonna get into kind of what that means just a bit later. And it's important to note that this is just the raw pre-trained model behind Mistral 7b. And there's there's a lot of fine tuning that has to be done. And I think it's kind of interesting that they did this at a hackathon because it gives a lot of people a lot of raw potential right out of the bat without too much of a starting point. And starting points are why I kind of question the validity of hackathons, to be honest. But obviously Mistral knows what they're doing with this, but I think much better results come out of hackathons like this than like Hack the North or like Collegian hackathons where it's more of a show rather than building kind of a situation. Now, there are a few caveats to this model. So. A few of those are that it's so new as a base model, it's not really worth benchmarking yet, in my opinion. The base model is pretty naive, it's not really specialized, and until it's sort of chiseled into a bit more of a focused form, I think it's probably going to be a little bit of time before we see really convincing benchmarks with this model forming against other state-of-the-art models. So this model was just released as a tarball. Uh, I guess Mistral has built their own CDN now, they're no longer just doing torrents. I think torrents are cool because for things like this, they make uh, the distribution much faster and easier, especially in countries where they might not have as much bandwidth. And torrents are just cool because uh, at a protocol level, it's a really elegant thing that was built. So you can find the actual repository in the uh, Mistral AI SF24 hackathon repo on GitHub. And right here, they basically give some basic instructions on how to run this. Effectively, you need their inference code and then you're off to the races being able to fine tune right away. So you, you pretty much just have to download it unzip it, open up a Docker container, and then deploy on top of the LLM, and then that's all you need. The demo is actually pretty straightforward, so I'm gonna show you guys some initial interactions with this base model. I'm doing some fine tuning as well, but since I don't have as massive a GPU budget, uh, I'm going for some lower hanging fruit first. And of course, one of the most efficient ways to fine tune this model, just like other versions of Mistral 7b, is with Lora fine tuning. So one big thing with this release is rope. And rope scaling is something that's pretty complex. And I've been using a number of books from O'Reilly to kind of back from my knowledge about this. And I'll have a link below if you guys are curious. So what is rope? So basically rope stands for rotary position embedding. And basically these are used to understand the relative position of words within a sentence. Each word in the sentence is assigned a unique embedding based on its position. And that's how models kind of understand why certain words matter more in terms of their input and output. A good way to like demonstrate the scaling is you know, if you could train an LLM on sentences with an average length of 10 words or with 50 words, there is obviously an ideal length that will give you the best accuracy and understanding within that. It's not necessarily 10 or 50, but it's somewhere in between. And based on what you're trying to do, being able to choose what that number is matters. So basically, if you have a larger rope sequence, it just means that, generally speaking, you can give it longer context and it will have a much better idea of what's going on. This isn't implicitly tied to a context window or a, or, and it's not really cut tied uh, whether or not a sliding context window would help this. 
it's just another way that LLMs can actually understand the input they're being given, and more importantly, the embeddings that they're actually being fine-tuned on. So it's not surprising here that the Hugging Face page is pretty bare bones. Basically, this is someone else who just uploaded it and they link to their CDN and along with their GitHub. So what is interesting here is there have already been uh, GTUF conversions of this model and it's already been quantized as well, which is pretty cool. And the other really cool thing we got from this, aside from the model release itself, which I actually think is kind of more interesting, is what Mistral is calling the Mistral Agent Cookbook. So Mistral has not been super quiet about the fact that they're doing a ton of work with Mistral and agents. The idea being that you have a bunch of different instances of Mistral 7B doing specific things and most importantly interacting with each other in kind of a programmatic way after being prompted to do something. The ideal architecture of agents, even though there's so many out in the AI space today, is that you prompt a set of agents, they interpret whatever needs to be done, they do what has to be done, and then they give you a single result or output. And what's cool here is they both show you how to use either the Mistral API or local models with this, so you don't have to do this through their API. It supports function calling right out of the box. They give pretty distinct examples how to do RAG from scratch or things like text to SQL. They actually already allow you to build custom agents and this is all really well documented. So I think this is quite cool. Things like Llama Parse and uh, Lavog are really cool things to read up about if you haven't sort of familiarized yourself with these things already. Now, there are already quantized versions of this showing up, even though this hackathon is still ongoing. And the follow-up to this video will be looking at what we actually got out of this hackathon. So what's interesting is, and big thanks to Daniel Hahn for actually putting this together, but it looks like in terms of his benchmarks and just using this, you get about uh, two times faster performance with 70% less VRAM for QLORA fine tuning using Unsloth AI. And there are also some really interesting capabilities that are showing up that are seemingly emergent. So let's see what we can do with this. And some other really cool findings from Daniel is that right now, if you use actually the same notebook, you can actually interact and fine tune pretty effectively with just an RTX 3090. And there's also a chat ML notebook here, which I'll also show that we're actually going to actively interact with. But it's really cool to know that even with all the progress we've had, that uh, the 4-bit quantization of this model can actually run on a single RTX 3090, which right when Mistral 7B came out, that was not exactly the case. So this is probably one of my favorite Python notebooks that shows the process of training from start to finish, uh, especially starting with a base model. So what's cool here is this is using Unsloth, which is a really great tool to help with this. They also step you through some other things you can do with the outputs of this, so you can actually turn this into a llama model. Right now, this is all just built on top of a 4-bit quantization of Mistral 7b version 0.2 base. And basically what we're doing here is giving it some structure to use the chat ML style and use some text and conversations to fine tune and focus the model a bit further. So if you run this and kind of just step through, um, it explains exactly what's going on. Uh, the trainer is also pretty quick and Actually running this on the Tesla T4 really didn't take that much time. I'd say it maybe took like five or eight minutes. And you can see here that we used around 886 seconds for training. And now we're going to try some inference. So obviously this is using ChatML with the apply chat template and a few other things. And let's see what it gets. So what's cool here is we did in fact get the Fibonacci sequence out, which is pretty cool. What's also cool is you can use something called text streamer for continuous inference, which is something really worth reading about if you guys haven't heard of this before. This kind of just actively looks for input and just gives you something out when it sees it. And what's also interesting here is if you use this fast language model, you can actually get about two times faster local inference. Now we're seeing actually the live output. We're not actually just having to wait for the entire sequence to be finished. And I'm gonna try a few other prompts here just to see what happens. This is saying again to continue the, the Fibonacci sequence and gives a kind of a set of numbers. And let me see here. So now if I put, how oh, would I make bread if corn kernels? So the idea here is in theory, you can make bread this way, but we have to grind it into some kind of flour first and we'll see what it tells us to do. So here we're getting to bake bread with corn kernels. You will need to first grind the kernels into a flour. You can do this by using a food processor, etc. Once you have the flour, you can mix it with water to create a dough, then shape the dough. So basically it's telling us how to make tortillas. 
which is pretty cool. But what's great is we got that right off the bat and we did this with actually very little fine tuning. So let me try one more here. Write a basic Python function to gauge my distance from a sound I heard. It got it. So basically we need a relative distance from the source, a relative amount of sound. And let's see here what it gives us. What's also interesting is it is clearly aware of formatting because it understands when it wants to do to like actually do code and then what it actually does um, when it's writing in sentences and it just kind of keeps going. So that's kind of cool. At least in terms of being aware of formatting and not just like words in, words out. And what's also cool here is it gives you some great harnesses and example code to show actually how to save these models and then, for instance, upload them to the local LLM leaderboard or just to keep them on your own machine so you can spin them up for inference whenever you want. I'm gonna do some more um, tutorial content. I actually got some great feedback when I asked if anyone else wanted to do some collaboration, creating more um, instructional stuff. It's a lot of what you guys are asking for and I'm doing my best to make sure that I can still cover enough of what's going on and that you guys get a lot of great stuff to actually continue learning. And what I wanna start doing is providing more of the resources I use in the descriptions of these videos. So even though I can't make hour or you know, multiple hour long videos about how to do some of this stuff, um, so that you guys can learn kind of at the pace I did and you don't have to be buying really expensive courses or looking all over since there are hundreds of mailing lists and people who just talk about this stuff but don't actually want to give you the best information as quickly as possible. So keep an eye out for that in the descriptions below. Let me know if there are any other areas you want me to focus on. Um, let me know in the comments what you think about Mistral 7B version 0.2 base and what you want to see from the hackathon they hosted in SF this weekend. As always, I hope you learned something from this video. Please um, like, subscribe, and share if you like this video, and we'll see you in the next one.